ਪੰਜਾਬ ਟੈਲੀਵਿਜ਼ਨ ਦੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਹੀ ਦਰਸ਼ਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਬਹੁਤ ਪਿਆਰ ਭਰੀ ਨਮਸਕਾਰ ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਮੈਂ ਹਾਂ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਆਪਣਾ ਮਨਨ ਗੁਪਤਾ ਜੀ ਹਾਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਜੁੜ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਹੋ ਰੋਡ ਟੂਡੇ 360 ਇੱਕ ਐਕਸਕਲੂਸਿਵ ਪੇਸ਼ਕਸ਼ ਰੋਡ ਟੂਡੇ ਮੀਡੀਆ ਗਰੁੱਪ ਦੀ ਫਾਰ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਟੈਲੀਵਿਜ਼ਨ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਟਰਾਂਸਪੋਰਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਟਰੱਕਿੰਗ ਆਟੋਮੋਟਿਵ ਵਰਲਡ ਦੀ ਸਾਡੇ ਲੋਕਲ ਟ੍ਰਾਂਜ਼ਿਟ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੀ ਕੁਝ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਔਰ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਖਾਸ ਮਹਿਮਾਨ ਜੁੜੇ ਨੇ ਜਿਸ ਲਈ ਵੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਟਰੱਕਿੰਗ ਇੰਡਸਟਰੀ ਦੀ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਟਰਾਂਸਪੋਰਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੀ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਵੱਖਰੀਆਂ ਵੱਖਰੀਆਂ ਸੰਸਥਾਵਾਂ ਨੇ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਵੱਖਰੀਆਂ ਵੱਖਰੀਆਂ ਐਸੋਸੀਏਸ਼ਨਸ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਇੰਪੋਰਟੈਂਟ ਔਰ ਕੰਸਟਰਕਟਿਵ ਰੋਲ ਅਦਾ ਕਰਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਔਰ ਸਾਡੇ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਗੈਸਟ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਵੈਰੀ ਵੈਲ ਨੋਨ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਟਰੱਕਿੰਗ ਇੰਡਸਟਰੀ ਐਂਡ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਦਾ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੀਡੈਂਟ ਆਫ private motor truck council of canada and i'm very pleased to welcome none other than mike million to the show mike welcome to rotary 360 uh, thanks man thank you it's always a uh, good and a pleasure to uh, you know talk to meet uh, professionals like you those who have served the industry with pride and passion so thank you. i'm glad you are back in the studio after full year you know <laughs> yeah it's a pleasure to be here thanks for inviting me back yeah so uh, mike you know um, we are just in the start of 2018 2017 has just passed by so how do you see some uh, you know outcomes for the trucking industry happening in 2017 and those impacting our profession our trade in 2018 uh well i think the biggest uh, most recent announcement that uh, was made in late 2017 obviously was the electronic logging device mandate in canada right um the announcement was made coincidentally enough on the same day that it became in into law in, in the United States of America. Correct. And it was made right here in Brampton. Yes, <laughs> yes it was. I uh, saw you at the event. Yeah. But uh that's something that we've been working on for years consultations with the electronic logging device mandate with uh, Transport Canada date back to 2010. Right. So this is something that's been going on for a long time. Okay. Uh glad to see the announcement was finally made after uh numerous delays getting it posted in Gazette 1 and uh, you know we're not fully there yet it's in the posting at Gazette 1 the uh, comments are uh, are open for 60 days up until February 14th i believe it is uh-huh. uh after that they'll have to review the comments and then uh, and then get it posted in uh, in Gazette 2 which we hope to see by this summer okay um and then there'll be probably an 18 to 24 month rollout window before it becomes law but that's in our view that's a very positive uh, regulation that's coming into place one that'll it'll put us in line with the US and uh-huh. uh it's something that's needed the uh, doing log books by paper which we've been doing for years is a very outdated uh, system i think as we know with today's technology and right. it, it's one that leaves it far too open to uh, uh for people to cheat the system to be blunt for people to uh to to fudge their books and and uh operate beyond the hours of service limits because yeah. uh, it's harder to uh to catch them and keep them within compliance and the, the electronic mandate will make oversight uh far easier and and will bring those who are cutting rates and operating outside the boundaries of the law right uh they'll either have to come within compliance of the law and yeah. change their operations yeah or they'll have to exit the industry which is is better for all of us involved in the industry and all of us who share the road with uh, uh, with all the, uh, the absolutely the there. absolutely and i know you know uh, you yourself and your organization pmtc has been a long time supporter and promoter for elds to come into effect and pmtc yes. definitely played a larger role working in collaboration with transport canada and other associations to this announcement and you were there as a major part of that announcement i was very pleased to see you yes. there you know yes. addressing Thank along you. with federal minister you mentioned fudging about you know like uh, the log books and you know other elements uh, do you see the maintenance and the you know the safety element also equally important for the industry how oh, well of course uh, anything that uh, has to do with the safe operation of your vehicle is important if people don't keep the maintenance up on their vehicle that's right. uh um uh, brakes aren't going to work properly the uh, tires aren't maintained properly um you know all the systems that are that are involved in safe operation of a vehicle uh if maintenance isn't kept up it's going to affect the uh the safety uh, of the vehicle on the roadway right um safety isn't as big of an um vehicle maintenance isn't as big of an issue anymore as it used to be uh, okay. we still need the oversight mm-hmm. uh, obviously but uh, statistics indicate that in uh in the majority of commercial motor vehicle accidents well over uh well over 80% of the time um vehicle maintenance is not a factor okay. um the, the biggest issues right now in road safety are uh uh to be blunt is distracted driving it's driver it's, behavior. it's the driver behavior right right which is something it's not just a trucking industry issue it's a societal issue right that uh, yeah absolutely everybody wants to be multitasking you know at the same time yeah. and these smartphones they come very handy when you want to multitask but yeah. not while driving no no and especially not uh 
Uh, whether you're in a car or a truck is not something you should do. Uh, mm -hmm. I think any of us go up and down the 401 or 400 series highways, and it, it's not hard to tell that uh, uh, a conservative guess, I bet you over half the people on the road are not looking where they should be. They're, mm -hmm. they're looking down. Um, and uh, truck drivers aren't, um, aren't exempt from this. Right? Yeah. Um, what we need to do is figure out a way to increase enforcement. I, I think as an industry, we're doing everything we can. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's still more we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, there's always more you can do. Um, as an industry, I, I believe we take road safety seriously and we put ourselves above uh, the general public. We mm -hmm. consider ourselves professionals. Yes. Uh, as a professional, we have to hold ourselves to a higher standard. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe we do. Right. Um, statistics indicate that in over 70% of the accidents involving uh, commercial motor vehicles, mm -hmm. Uh, the commercial motor vehicle operator was operating properly. Right. It's the the passenger vehicle operator who is operating uh, incorrectly, and in over 70% of the cases is found to be at fault. Right. Okay. Now, in saying that, uh, that's good news for our industry. However, that means in 30% of the cases, or 25 to 30% of the cases, we're still at fault. We still need improvement. So, so we still need to work on things. Yeah. And... Um, we need to figure out a way to get that message through. We, we struggle with it the same as society does. Right. Now, what a lot of people don't know in the industry, though, is the monitoring systems that a lot of carriers have in place already. Um, lots of carriers have electronic monitoring of the drivers already. Right. And some of them may have logs in it, some of them may not, but they're monitoring their driver's mm -hmm. behaviors on the road. Uh, they're monitoring things as harsh brakes, mm -hmm. uh, speeding. Right. Um, when they get a harsh break, when they get a speeding incident, uh, the drivers are brought in. They, mm -hmm. they try to coach them what caused this harsh break. Why mm -hmm. were you speeding? They try to coach the behaviors out of them, retrain them, get them to stop these behaviors. Mm -hmm. um, and if they can't, um, then we need to move on. Right? And a lot of carriers have that in place. Uh, right. We have camera systems. We have front-facing camera systems that allow you to see what's going on out in the roadways. Which are, in fact, very helpful in case of any untoward collision or, you know, Correct. accident. Because they can come as a handy witness. Right. Uh, we have inward-facing cameras yeah. in some of our trucks now that allow you, when, when an incident is triggered, right. the camera would turn on and allow you to see what the, uh, the driver is doing. So you can see if they're on their smartphone or other devices. These are a little more controversial than the outward facing cameras Correct. invasion of privacy. privacy space. Sure. Um, there is some carriers, however, that, that, that have it and they are using this to monitor their behaviors. Um, there's more we need to do. We're working with the, the industry is working with the MTO, the OPP. Right. Um, we were at a recent meeting at the, at the OTA offices where uh, uh, the PMTC, the OTA, MTO, OPP representatives were there, representatives from Teamsters was there, <coughs> uh, lots of representation from the industry. We're trying to work with the MTO and OPP Correct. to try and find a way to give the industry better oversight and, and to be blunt to work on enforcement. Absolutely. A lot of the rules are in place. Yeah. We need to improve enforcement. Absolutely. You know, enforcement definitely needs to be stepped up, but so is the education and awareness, you know, yes. and so is the training levels. It's I all, know it's, just it's all a part of it. Right? It's all a part of it. It's all, you know, it's a, all part of that larger puzzle. And I'm glad that uh, effective last July, there's a new program melt in, already in place, and PMTC did play a larger role in that implementation also, the mandatory entry level training. So, how do you see the first six months? Uh, of that program in effect and do you see some feedback from carriers, those who are now hiring those new drivers or from the training schools? Yeah, well, I haven't heard a lot of feedback from the carriers yet, okay. um, but, but as you know, or maybe you don't, but I, I'm also on the board of directors for the Truck Training Schools Association Yeah, Ontario. I know that, yeah. We have, you uh, wear so many hats. <laughs> we have a very positive relationship uh, yeah. with them and uh, uh, we were all involved in uh, with the Ministry of Transportation of Ontario of, of implementing mandatory entry-level training. Mm -hmm. There has been some good feedback, there's been some negative feedback. Okay. Um, the, the negative feedback is just around the systems that are set up around the road tests um, okay. and, uh, and perhaps the, the way road tests are being conducted, they're not consistent across all the drive oh, test centers. Oh, they're still not consistent? Um, like they were the, 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 the rules are there, the instructors maybe aren't marking it consistently. Okay. Um, there was a significant uptick in failure rates when it when it first started. Um, Obviously, you know. yeah, which is to be expected when a new program comes in place. Yeah. Uh, those are starting to normalize a bit and, and, and come back down. To the MTO's credit, um, they've been very open in this process. The uh, we 
talked with the MTO 90 days, 120 days into this. They were open with the, the issues that uh, they were having with the, the testing and at some of the centers and getting the communication out. And uh, uh, they're dealing with it and working on it. So they're still working with industry. I think we have to expect to transition whenever you come into anything new. Uh, a- overall, I, I think it's positive and it's, uh, it's something that we're going to see more of an effect as it goes forward. Being six months into it, some of these first drivers that have gone through this mm-hmm. are now just hitting the road. Um, so there hasn't been a lot of feedback from Carrier yet because mm-hmm. they're really not seeing a lot of these students yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and this is an ongoing process, you know, feedback, oh yeah. input, consultation, and improvement within the system. Yeah, the, the MTO committed after a year to go back and review it and look at it again and, okay. and see where maybe shortcomings are. We need to look at eventually getting other classes of drivers into it. Right. Commercial licenses right now is just for Class A. Right, right. Uh, and <clears throat> on a federal level, we, we need to try to implement this at different jurisdictions across Canada and make this a federal initiative. But, but overall, I, it was a very positive process with the MTO, I think it's it's having its desired effect. There, there's going to be areas that we need to continue to work on as we go forward. It's it's what we call a living document or living regulation, document. I think. Correct. You always have to look at it and make improvements. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, uh, you're watching Rotary 360, an exclusive presentation by Rotary Media Group for Punjab Television, and we have amongst us Mike Million. He's the president of Private Motor Truck Council of Canada. It's time for a short break, but don't go away. We'll be right back after this very brief commercial break, and you're watching Punjab Television. Thank you very much.